This video was created for the Clearwater Public Library System. Family supervision and participation are strongly encouraged and required for younger children. Welcome to the Halloween and Day of the Dead Extravaganza 2020. Paint poured pumpkins and sugar skull crowns. Bubble, bubble, toil and trouble. Welcome to our crafting bubble. Make them scary, never subtle. Climb aboard our witch's shuttle. Look out! Hi, I'm Miss Jill. And I'm Nicole. We're here today with a fabulous Halloween. And Day of the Dead. Crafting, crafting extravaganza. extravaganza. Today, we'll be paint pouring pumpkins. And creating sugar skull crowns. But wait, there's more. We'll be pouring two CD surprise monsters. We also have this lovely printable Day of the Dead or Dia de los Muertos coloring page that I designed and this frightening printable haunted house dandy with its own skeleton character. You may want to print out the copies of the printables now. They're available in the video description below and also at the instructions page at sisterearth.net. Each of the printouts are available in black and white if you'd like to color or paint them or you can print out the pages I've already colored in and get right to crafting. Please note, print the Sugar Skull Crowns and Haunted House Standee pages on thick paper like cardstock if you can. If not, I'll give you a tip later in the video how you can add structure to your crown and haunted house. No craft kit? No problem. As always, I'll provide full instructions to make these crafts even if you don't have a craft kit with things you probably already have around the house. It's still a good idea to print out the printable craft if you can, and if you can't, go ahead and draw your own. In the craft kit, eight cups, popsicle sticks to stir, school glue, paint and lidded containers, two CDs to pour on, one foam pumpkin, and googly eyes. What you'll need, drop cloth or garbage bag, crayons, markers, or paint, scissors, additional school glue, tape, and a stapler. If you don't have a craft kit, you'll need paper and masking tape or grocery bags and masking tape, paper strips, school glue, food coloring or craft paint, eight paper cups, CDs, record albums, or 45s. Optional supplies, empty cereal boxes, stickers, glitter, paint, watercolors, ribbon, or anything else you'd like to add. How much do you know about the history of Halloween? According to Scholastic.com, the Halloween customs observed on October 31st had their beginnings long, long ago. They came from the beliefs of the Druids, priests of ancient Gaul and Britain. The Druids believed that witches, demons, and spirits of the dead roamed the earth on the eve of November 1st. Bonfires were lit to drive the bad spirits away. To protect themselves from the mean tricks of the bad spirits, the Druids offered them good things to eat. They also disguised themselves. They thought that way the spirits would think the Druids belonged to their own evil company. Thus we celebrate Halloween, playing trick or treat, dressing up in costumes, and wearing masks. Much later, the Roman Catholic Church set aside the first day of November to honor all the saints who had no special days of their own. Saints were known as the Hallowed or Holy Ones. Their special day was known as All Saints or All Hallows Day. The night before was called All Hallows Even. All Hallows Even was then shortened to Halloween. That's awesome! So interesting! And how about the history of Day of the Dead? According to KidsNationalGeographic.com, Day of the Dead combines the ancient Aztec custom of celebrating ancestors with All Souls Day, a holiday that Spanish invaders brought to Mexico starting in the early 1500s. The holiday, which is celebrated mostly in Mexico on November 1st and 2nd, is like a family reunion, except dead ancestors are the guests of honor. Day of the Dead is a joyful time that helps people remember the deceased and celebrate their memories. People set up candlelit altars in their homes so spirits can find their way back to their relatives. The altar also offers some of the favorite foods of the deceased, just in case they get hungry. Items that were important to the ancestors when they were alive, such as a favorite book or musical instrument, are placed on the altar as well. Skeletons. And don't forget the skeletons. During Day of the Dead, 
life-size paper mache skeletons and miniature plastic or clay skeletons are everywhere. The skeletons are posed doing all sorts of wacky things, such as playing guitar, taking a bath, or making tortillas. Apparently, people aren't the only ones who get to have fun on Day of the Dead. And we're going to have a lot of fun too, so let's get started. Mixing the paint. You'll find red, yellow, blue, and gold paint in your craft kit. Divide the glue in your craft kit up into the four containers. Ideally, you'll add additional glue that you have at home to top off each color. But don't worry if you don't have any additional glue, you'll have just enough to cover everything. And then it's on to stirring. Stir everything very well. You really want to combine the glue and the paint. How to mix paint without a craft kit. Gather some small containers to mix your paint in. For this, we're going to use glue and food coloring. Simply fill the containers with glue and add food coloring. Mix everything up until you achieve the desired shade. This homemade paint isn't quite as bright as some other paints may be, but it works really well in a lot of different crafting applications. How beautiful are these colors? If you don't have a foam pumpkin, or you'd like to create more pumpkins to pour paint on, mix up a bowl of school glue and water about 50-50. Mix well, I like to use a fork. Pro Pinata tip! Allow the mixture to sit for about 10 minutes before use. It'll thicken up and everything will combine together. To create the shape of the pumpkin, I'm going to use some old grocery bags. But you could also use some paper, recycling, or anything you have around the house. I stuffed my bags into one bag and now I'm kind of forcing it into shape with my hands. And now I'm using some masking tape to hold the bags together and start to get everything into shape. The masking tape also allows the paper mache to adhere well to our pumpkin. Are you starting to see that pumpkin shape yet? Now I'll add some rubber bands to give the pumpkin its ribs. Play with the rubber bands a little bit and adjust them until you get the form that you like. Now I'll set my pumpkin shape up on top of a little bowl to keep it off the table and run strips of paper through my glue and water mixture and add to my pumpkin. I like to cut up little pieces of coloring pages, but you can really use about any paper you have around. Be sure to cover your entire pumpkin thoroughly and when you're through with the top side, go ahead and flip it over and add strips to the bottom. Allow your pumpkin or pumpkins to dry thoroughly, probably overnight. If you'd like to paint it orange, prepare paint as we did before with glue and food coloring. I used a little yellow and a little red and mixed it up and paint your pumpkin and allow it to dry thoroughly again. This paint can be a little bit transparent, but don't worry, the paint that we're pouring over it will cover everything nicely. Paint Poured Pumpkins. I've set the two CDs from my craft kit, each on a cup, and my foam pumpkin on three cups. I've also gotten three cups out of my craft kit, one for each project, so that I can divide up my paint. Begin by pouring different colors into the cups. You can go in any order and this is so much fun. Divide the paint up fairly equally with maybe a little bit extra for your pumpkin. You'll definitely want to use up every drop of paint. Experiment in each cup and I think you'll really be pleasantly surprised. Even using the same colors, each project will be a little different. So let's pour these pumpkins. Pick up your cup 
I like to go ahead and squeeze a little bit at the end and create a spout so that I can control my paint. Personally, I don't usually pour the stem, I usually pour around it. But you can pour in spirals that go out toward the edge. You can come back into the middle. In paint pouring, this is called ribbons. It really is a lot of fun. Enjoy the process and all of those beautiful colors and drips. Pumpkins are ideal for paint pouring. If you'd like, you can add some paper underneath your pumpkin. Use something thicker like watercolor paper, and that way you can actually create art from the drips from your pumpkin. How colorful and beautiful is this? And here we have a paint poured pumpkin. Aren't you glad I showed you how to make more? A moment of fun. I wrote this poem and decided to add hand motions to it. It's called Halloween in Motion and we hope you'll join along. There's a printable worksheet for you to practice with as well as a Halloween in Motion video in this video's description. If you miss a beat, don't worry. Just pick up right where we're at. First, I'll show you what it looks like all together. Halloween, Halloween, full of spooky frights. Costumes and candies and scary fun delights. Monsters and werewolves howl out of sight. Until it's time for bed and they get tucked in for the night. So let's break this down. Halloween, Halloween, full of spooky frights. And we'll try the next line. Costumes and candy and spooky fun delights. Onto the third line where the hand motions are the same as the first. Monsters and werewolves howl out of sight. And now the final line. Until it's time for bed and they get tucked in for the night. Let's try the first two lines together. Halloween, Halloween, full of spooky frights. Costumes and candies and scary fun delights. And let's try the second two lines. Monsters and werewolves howl out of sight. Until it's time for bed and they get tucked in for the night. Now let's try it all together. Halloween, Halloween, full of spooky frights. Costumes and candies and scary fun delights. Monsters and werewolves howl out of sight until it's time for bed and they get tucked in for the night. Yes, good job. Spooky fun. No craft kit, no problem, pumpkin pours. Here I'm creating a cup from my homemade paints to pour over our homemade pumpkins. And I'll set it up on cups and pour it just as I did the other pumpkin. I really love the way this one comes out too. After this pumpkin dries completely, you may want to add a thumbtack with a little glue at the top for a stem. CD Surprise Monsters. So lay each CD on a cup and you are ready to pour. Make your spout and pour away. It's really fun to pour in spirals. You can go out and all around. Really use your imagination and just have fun. I hope you find this as relaxing as I do. I could pour paint all day. And sometimes I do.
I'll touch up these edges. And now it's time to pour the other CD. After you're through pouring, allow these to dry thoroughly and I'll show you the next step on how we turn them into CD Surprise Monsters. The surprise is all in the paint. After they're dry, you can glue on googly eyes, buttons, ribbon, yarn, anything you can think of. I even use my craft kit bag. A moment of fun. Sugar Skull Crowns. Print out your Sugar Skull Crown printables. They'll last longer on cardstock, but copy paper works well too. Cut everything out. To make it a little bit easier, I'll often just cut circles around some of the flowers. I'll be using this glass skull as my model. You can use tape or glue here, but the tape's a little bit easier. Using tape at either end of the headband strips, I created the crown to fit my skull. You might want this to fit your own skull. The next step is to place the skeleton hands. I like to use a stapler, but you can also use tape or glue. I stapled on one end of the skeleton hand gathered up the fingers and stapled the other side on. It looks pretty three-dimensional. Time to add the other hand. Place the other skeleton hand opposite the first on your headband. Now I'll place one of the sugar skulls front and center on my crown. I like to staple the taller things twice. Next I'll add the other sugar skulls on either side of the skeleton hands. Now it's time to add our flowers and our spider. Place them all around the crown. I almost covered my headband. You can layer them on top of, or place them behind, other items. I wouldn't want any blank spots. Here it is from the top. And here it is completed and ready for wear. Another moment of fun. Celebrating the harvest and those we have lost. Flowers and thoughts of paths that have crossed. Bright colors and music with candles ablaze. And skeletons dancing as sugar skulls gaze. Haunted house standees. You can print out your haunted house standee printable in color or color it in yourself. If you can, print it on cardstock. If not, my next best suggestion is to cut up a cereal box
and glue your printed page to a piece of the box. It'll dry much faster if you don't use too much glue. Make sure to get your skeleton character and his little standing tab. Smooth everything out, allow it to dry for a few minutes, and it's time to cut them out. Bend where indicated on your haunted house, and use tape in the back to help it stand up. For your skeleton, cut the tabs, and use the little standing tab to help your skeleton character stand up. And there you go! Haunted House Standees! A moment of fun. Another moment of fun. Okay, we want to see how well you remember our Halloween poem with hand motions. Let's try the first two lines together. Halloween, Halloween, full of spooky frights. Costumes and candies and scary fun delights. And let's try the second two lines. Monsters and werewolves howl out of sight until it's time for bed and they get tucked in for the night. Now let's try it all together. Halloween, Halloween, full of spooky frights. Costumes and candies and scary fun delights. Monsters and werewolves howl out of sight until it's time for bed and they get tucked in for the night. Yes! Good job! We hope you'll keep practicing Halloween in motion. Again, there's a separate video link in the video description that will take you right to a video to practice and a printable worksheet to show you all of the moves. It's a lot of fun! Reading of Fuzzy Green Halloween. We'll be reading my Halloween book, Fuzzy Green Halloween, for more Halloween fun and an outer space adventure. My Fuzzy Green series is available for checkout at the Clearwater Public Library System and available for purchase at sisterearth.net. Fuzzy Green Halloween, written and illustrated by Jill Jackson. Wishing you all a very happy Halloween. Reach for the stars, reach for the moon. If you try hard enough, you'll be holding them soon. Once upon a time, in the not-too-distant future, there was a planet named Fuzzy. It was a very happy place, a lot like Earth, that the Fuzzies liked to call home. The Fuzzies loved holidays. They fancied Easter, and they enjoyed birthdays. They adored Christmas, Hanukkah, St. Patrick's Day, and Arbor Day. In fact, they looked forward to celebrating every festival, jubilee, and soiree all year round. Birthdays are holidays, too. There were a few holidays that were true favorites. Can you guess which one they liked the most in the fall? Halloween! They all looked forward to making their own costumes and sharing lots of candy and treats. What could be better than celebrating Halloween on Planet Fuzzy? Celebrating Halloween on Earth! I bet candy on Earth is the size of my house! It is! Lake Monster wants a happy Halloween. As the friends walked to school that morning, they wondered what Halloween would be like on Earth. Happy Halloween! Happy Halloween, class! Miss Violet and her fuzzy worm Celeste were more than delighted to start their day. Happy Halloween, class! I know we're all excited to get to Earth. Let's go! Let's go to Earth! When we arrive on Earth, each of you will use the Fuzzy Metamorphosis Modulator to become the size of children so that you can go trick-or-treating. Let's go to Earth, she said. And off to Earth they went in their Universal Fuzzy Object, or UFO for short. On the way, they all put the finishing touches on their costumes. Before anyone knew it, they had arrived on Earth and each of them had used the Fuzzy Metamorphosis Modulator to become the size of a child. Now the whole class was ready to go trick-or-treating. 
Ruby, Periwinkle, Daisy, and Jade all wanted to dress up as ghosts. They would stick together and call themselves a fright. Neon had decided to be a skeleton, Emerald was the planet Earth, and Little Indigo chose to be a fancy hat lady. Off they went trick-or-treating from door to door. Everyone was having a grand old time. That is, until Little Indigo took too long checking the candy in her bucket and became separated from her friends. Boo! Give Max your candy now! She started to look for them when her hat suddenly flew off. A boy screamed, Boo! as loud as he could. She jumped and began to feel genuinely frightened. Give Max your candy now, he bellowed. Poor Indigo started to cry. She had never been treated this way and had only heard about it in class. She knew she was being bullied and couldn't believe how much it hurt her feelings or how scared and uneasy she felt. Indigo put her hat back on and just as she was about to hand her bucket of candy to Max, she heard her friends coming. Max's face had already softened. Deep down, he didn't like the way he felt. Neon walked slowly toward Max. I'm Neon, he said bravely, extending his arm to shake hands with Max. Max, why in the galaxy would you do this? I'm truly sorry. I didn't have any friends to go trick-or-treating with tonight. Max could barely open his mouth. When he finally spoke, he said, I'm sorry. That's it. I'm truly sorry. He paused and took a deep breath. The truth is, I didn't have any friends to go trick-or-treating with tonight, he admitted, looking toward the ground. Come with us, Max! Indigo thought for a moment and said, That's not much fun, Max. I'll be your friend, and maybe you'd like to come trick-or-treating with us. All at once, the whole group shouted, Come with us, Max! And he did. In fact, Max appreciated their friendship and kindness so much. Thank you. What a spectacular party. He invited them to come back to his house for a spectacular Halloween party. Being included and having friends is all I ever really wanted, said Max, handing out candy to his new friends. Max's mother was delighted to see him so happy. Having friends is all I ever really wanted. Has anyone ever seen such far out costumes? Max asked. No one ever had. We have to go home now. Thanks for everything, Max. As always, there was a collective groan when the UFO bell rang, announcing that it was time to go home. This has been the best Halloween ever, exclaimed Indigo. Thanks for everything, Max added Neon, realizing he would miss his new friend. On their way back across the galaxy, the class thought about how much fun they'd had, but also how scared they'd been. They knew they had made a real difference that Halloween by sending their best anti-bullying tips by microdrone to Max. How to be bully free. B. Be a friend and think about how you'd feel in that situation. You Understand. You never know what someone else has going on in their life. L. Look out for others and don't turn a blind eye. L. Locate a trusted adult. An adult can help you come up with a plan so you'll know what to do. Y. Yes, together we can be bully free. Restored to their normal size, the friends gathered once more to go door to door and celebrate their own fuzzy green Halloween. The end. Happy Halloween! For a Halloween surprise, I'm including four of these books in the craft kits. Two lucky families at the Countryside Library and two lucky families at the East Library will each be receiving a copy of the book. Hope you enjoy! Thank you so much for joining us. This has been so much fun and I've learned a lot about Halloween and the Day of the Dead. Me too! We hope that we've given you tons of ideas to keep you crafting all season long. As always, my friends, happy creating! I'm here to here today with a fabulous, fabulous, And this is Hazel. She's our kitten.
This video was created for the Clearwater Public Library System. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe for more tips and ideas and visit SisterEarth.net for videos, events, and to check out the fine art and children's books available for purchase. As always, happy creating, my friends!